Ladies and gentlemen, this is a video about remaining encouraged and motivated and to help you to keep going even in the face of adversity and when it just doesn't seem like there's any reason to move forward. Um, my name is Reese Palmer and I am a singer-songwriter. And in 2007, I released my debut self-titled album, Reese Palmer. And uh, I was the first African-American woman in 20 years to reach the top 40 on the country charts. And um, gosh, where do I begin? I have always loved to sing um, from, gosh, the, the moment I think I came out of the, the womb, I was singing and wanted to sing. And um, anytime anyone asked me, would ask me when I was a little girl, you know, what do you want to be? I would always say I wanted to be a singer. And um, as I got older and started listening to music and, and, and kind of finding the things that I loved, I, I wanted to be a country singer. And um, so at, gosh, 18, I left college and started working um, with producers and a manager. And at 19, I got my first publishing deal in Nashville and just started writing songs and singing songs and playing anywhere that I could, anywhere where someone would want to listen to me for five minutes <laughs> in between drinking and eating pizza. And um, I just stuck with it. I lived in New York for a time, and um, in order to support my music habit, I would work like little odd jobs. I was retail girl. Um, if you lived in New Jersey in 2002, I probably sold you a pair of jeans. Um, I would sing jingles. I would, gosh, I, I did some of everything so that I could be a singer. Um, and in 2007, as I said before, I finally got my opportunity. And um, once we released the album and, and once the single came out, um, I started touring and got to tour with some really amazing people and open for some really amazing people. And like Taylor Swift, Sarah Evans, Chris Young. Um, I'm trying to think. Lady Annabellum, people like that um, were my contemporaries at the time. And, you know, I got to play at the White House. Wall Street Journal did like a full page story on me. Um, lots of, lots of amazing things. And um, I was kind of, I had a television show at one point on the Travel Channel and just, a lot of really awesome, amazing things came my way in those two years. And in 2009, it kind of all came to an end. Um, between some bad business decisions made on my part and bad personal decisions made on my part and bad business decision made on the part of the people that were in control of my career, I made a decision that it was no longer good for me as a human being and as an artist to remain in the situation that I was in. And it was a really hard decision because it was either continue to ride the wave of all these really amazing things. Like I had just signed um, a modeling deal and we were going to start trying to get endorsements and all these things. But I just wasn't happy. And I knew that my spirit was every day being like, almost like a bird pecking at a piece of bread. Like there were just pieces of me being taken away on a daily basis. And I just, I wasn't happy. And had I continued going the way that I was going, uh, only God knows where I'd be right now. So, um, thanks to some really amazing people in my life, such as my manager at the time and a lot of really good friends and God and <laughs> um, 
a lot of prayer, a lot of crying, a lot of talking to my mom and dad on the phone. I made the decision that I wanted to get out. And so I did. And it took me two years to get out. And in those two years, I couldn't perform music. And um, I was in court probably more than um, any of you watching will ever have to be in your life. And I had people saying things about me that um, were extremely hurtful, weren't true. And um, it was just painful. People that I thought were like family. And um, yeah, it was um, probably one of the more depressing, painful times of my life. And in addition to all that, in addition to being, you know, called a diva and called all sorts of names in court and in filings and things like that, um, I wasn't able to sing because I didn't own my name. And so um, I had to work a job while I still had music playing on CMT and um, on the radio. And, you know, sometimes people will walk into where I was working and they're like, why do you look familiar? I mean, like my face, I was still in magazines and, you know, people would. In fact, I worked across the hallway from the Apple store and the Apple store had licensed one of my videos. And the video was still playing in the store. So sometimes I would walk by and my video would be playing and I would be going in to clock in at work. So it was an extremely humbling time in my life, but um, also probably one of the saddest because aside from just always wanting to sing and always wanting to um, entertain, I just always wanted to be respected for what I love to do. And at that point in time in my life, I felt like that was all being taken away from me. And a lot of people that I thought were friends and allies were nowhere to be found. And um, yeah, it, it, it was a, uh, I've heard people say before that um, when you don't listen, God will make you listen. He'll give you many, many opportunities to hear what he's trying to tell you. And then finally, it's just like, okay, I'm going to do something. So she finally gets it. So that was me finally getting it. And um, the final straw for that whole thing was that I started to develop um, calluses on my vocal cords. So in addition to not being able to perform because I didn't know my name, I literally could not sing. And um, yeah, it was one of the hardest, scariest periods in my life. And I swore that if I made it through it, I probably would not be in the music business ever again. And um, after two years of fighting in court, I finally was granted my freedom. And... Um, the last thing that I wanted to do was be in anybody's recording booth or writing songs or doing any of that. I wanted absolutely nothing to do with the business. I didn't want to meet another manager. I didn't want to talk to an attorney. I didn't want to sign to a label. Like the thought of signing to a label just kind of made me sick. So um, in that time, I met my husband or re-met my husband, I should say. And um, we got married, and I found out that I was pregnant with my daughter, and I decided that I was just going to stay home and take care of my baby and make dinner and clean the house and wear pearls and high heels and vacuum, and that was going to be my life. And uh, yeah, that's not what God intended for me, and... Um, I, <laughs> it's so funny, um, 
I moved away from from Nashville and I moved away from you know the business and from people in the business and just kind of assumed a very quiet life and music found me here um, because that's just the way it works when you're supposed to be doing something um, there's nothing that's gonna stop you there's nothing that's gonna keep you from it especially if it's something that you really want deep down inside and um, the way I found myself back in music was through my daughter um, taking a baby music class the teacher heard me sing and she was like do you sing and uh, I said yes I didn't tell her to what extent I just said yes and she went home and googled and she was like, you need to be teaching voice. And so I started teaching voice lessons. And from teaching voice lessons, I just started singing with the kids and just really loved it. And I decided that I was going to dip my toe in and do a children's record. And getting back in the studio just kind of rekindled... Um, that excitement and that love that I've always had for the music and it felt extremely free and it kind of solidified the fact that yeah girl you need to be making music and um, from there I started a Kickstarter and um, 147 of my closest friends <laughs> um, helped me to make the album that I released last year called The Backboard Sessions. And we did it, we released it on our own. Um, I had some amazing producers and amazing songwriters on this project and that were just friends. And that were like, we'll help, we're gonna help you out with this. And uh, my husband and I put it out ourselves. And um, I was afraid because this was going to be my first big release without a record company and you know how can you fight against all the big records that are coming out but I had faith and um, you know many many blessings came my way upon the release of that record um, we got Rolling Stone to write an article about an EP a five song EP um, the album appeared in People Magazine, I did television, like it was just, it was kind of crazy it's considering that this was something that I literally sat at my kitchen table and conceptualized. And so I say all that and I tell you my story in a nutshell because there are lots of twists and turns that we're just not going to talk about today because we don't have that much time. But... um. I say all that to say that there is no reason, no reason, that you're not following your dream. Um, the thing is, is that you've got to realize that sometimes it's not always going to look the way that you expect it to. If you had told me when I was 17 years old that I would be releasing music from the comfort of my own home and... Um, my husband was going to be helping me do the graphics on my projects and, you know, I was going to learn how to do my own booking and all that kind of stuff. I don't know that I would have believed you because I would have not thought that I was capable of that. Like, that's not what I do. I sing. I write songs. I don't do all that. But when you have a purpose and when there is a passion, you find a way to make it happen. And... You don't need millions of dollars. You don't need a team of stylists and, and makeup artists and songwriters and producers. You just need your dream. And you need to be motivated. And you need to have the passion and the fire inside of you to make it happen. But most of all, you need to believe that you can make it happen. Because you can. And I'm living proof that... Even when it seems like everything is up against you and no one is helping you and that you might be the only person that believes in you, keep going. You can do it. 
Um, I hope that this helps. And I wish all of you who are trying and striving and dreaming and working towards your goal, I hope that you see some return on your hard work. I know you will. So God bless you and keep going.